Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, really? A tractor? A tractor. My goodness, there is a new era in WWE and it has Triple H written all over it. We are going to talk about the SummerSlam card and the fallout from it and what it means for this new era of WWE. Plus, guess what? AEW has another championship belt we'll discuss that as well and if triple h has anything else up his sleeve which he hinted at earlier this week so ladies and gentlemen get your get your get to your nearest john deere store order that tractor don't put it on a payment plan because we are going to be streaming and steamrolling right into this episode episode 302 the beast master of kings of the rings podcast exclusively on wrestle Attic radio and it starts right now I never, I didn't see that finish coming at all. Dude, I didn't. I didn't the, the fucking tractor, bro. I yeah, didn't see none, I didn't see none of that. Coming. I am kudos because we're going to talk about all that, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number three hundred two. I'm going to edit this in live, in live right now. Episode three hundred two, not three hundred one. This is Beast Master. I'm your host, King Ricky Rose, along with Willie T. And oh, actually, no, K Murphy. K Murphy is on a little bit of a sabbatical right now, so K Murphy will not be with us. It is just going to be myself and Willie T. We have a lot to talk about as I edit this title really really quickly um <laughs> summer Slam, like, baby yeah yeah no no summer like god i almost called me like yeah you want to be on the show tonight but no um but no we have a lot to cover summer slam was absolutely bonkers uh the fallout from it is even crazier um and oh yeah rick flair had us last night so we're going to talk about all of that but before we get to that let's go over to uh my co-host with the most today will tarasak how are you i have the most the most what I definitely don't know. the most definitely the most white hairs of this group. I got you also have the most love for Popeye's chicken as a royal fact, by the way. I do. I have the most love for Popeye's chicken. Do you not see a royal fact? Well, oh, I do. There you go. <laughs> I, do, I do. I do love Popeye's. <laughs> I fucking do love Popeye's, dude. The past two, past three times I was in the city for work, I thought about should I get Popeye's for lunch, and I didn't do it. I'm happy. Really, I'm proud of you. Yeah, dude, it's that spicy chicken sandwich was calling me, but it's like, <laughs> like, like twelve dollars now. So. Fuck all that. Is it really? I don't know. I'm assuming. It, it's it's high, all right? Chicken's yeah, high. That sucks, dude. Dude, everything is high. The cheapest steak in Hoboken is $50 <laughs> if you want to go to a restaurant, like a steakhouse. $50 for, like, not even, like, a good cut either, right? Yeah, it's it's like a six-ounce filet. Ew. Yeah, right? Ew. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. That's, that's Bush good, league. That's Bush gross. League. A, a regular-ass porterhouse is $70. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> oh my god, that's absolutely weird. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not going to the city anytime. Yeah, right? Yeah, I know, Zach, $12 in the city for Popeyes. Yeah, it is it is the absolute worst. It's just yes. Hoboken. <laughs> oh, just Hoboken? The, the, steak, the steak is Hoboken. The steak is Hoboken. The steak okay. is Hoboken. The Popeyes, I didn't check. Okay. Yeah, well, Hoboken has got ranked the seventh most expensive city in the country. Really? Yeah. Jersey City was number one, which I just laughed. Just all the people Jersey, who left New York. <laughs> Jersey City is the most expensive? Yeah, Jersey City was number one because all the people left New- they left New York to get Jersey City waterfront property, which, don't get me wrong, is fucking gorgeous. Yeah. All right? People say, like, Brooklyn's beautiful. Bitch, you get the back of the city. All right? <laughs> front. We get the face of New York City. You get, its, you get its tail and its asshole. Front and center. Yeah, we're front and center. Oh my god, yeah, and we are front and center today with our show, uh, The Beastmaster, because someone finally slayed the beast. But before we get to that, let's talk about some other stuff going on in the uh, in the world of wrestling, in particular, um, WrestleMania. Because, like it or not, folks, WrestleMania tickets go on sale next week. August 12th is the official on-sale date for WrestleMania 39 in Hollywood, Sophie Stadium, Englewood, California, April 1st and 2nd. Um, so single single day tickets and combo tickets go on sale next week, uh, August 12th. A very important date in my book. And pre-sale probably before that. So, Will, how much are you not going to WrestleMania this year? 
Dude, I'm not going to WrestleMania. Not a goddamn chance. <laughs> it's, it's in LA, right? Yeah. Yeah, no. Unless we tailgate with some homeless people, which. Highly possible. Yeah, most likely. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, not, it's not a goddamn chance going to WrestleMania. Dude, I can't afford that. Not a goddamn chance. I'm interested to see what the pricing is going to be uh, for this. Because that I looked at the um, looked at the seating map for this, and if you look at the seating map, well, I don't have it up here, but if you look at the seating map, this stadium is five levels. It's five levels. So you know how you have like like the first level is one hundred, second level is two hundred, all of that shit. Use that's how the numbering yeah. system goes. Yeah, there's five levels to this stadium. That's absurd. Yeah. So, so they're going to probably break their attendance record. At least that's what they're going to tell you <laughs> that they've done. Um, and it's not. I love how people just let them get away with lying about their numbers. <laughs> no one cares about numbers too much. I can tell you, I was like, like when I went to my first one, I was like, wow, that's a shit ton of people. And when they said it was 102,000, it's like, this looks like 102,000 fucking people. Like, I couldn't tell the fucking difference. I bet you those computers can tell the fucking difference either. Um, but it's also, by the way, it's not just a Rams stadium. It's a Chargers stadium, too, which means no one shows up for the Chargers. Most people show up for the Rams. They didn't uh, even sell the fourth and fifth levels. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. So I'm, I'm actually uh, assuming, based on, past, um, based on past pricing of WrestleMania, shit's going to be cheap for some good seats. It's going to be real cheap for some good seats. Yeah, but getting there. That's and, the issue. And, tra- and go, getting around there. You, dude, you, have, you have to take an Uber everywhere and sit in traffic everywhere. That's why I rent cars, baby. And eat everywhere. That's like, fine with me. Dude. I have friends out in Cali. LA, LA is going to be so expensive. Dude, you know, like, they brought in like a billion dollars to Dallas for WrestleMania. $206.8 million, but yeah. Whatever. We'll they get, dude, they're going to get close to a billion because everything's so goddamn expensive. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what the pricing is. Uh, I'm on the fence about it, but, I am, but I, I am very, very interested in 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 what the pricing is going to be like. Because, like, if it's if it's good, I'm going to probably take that leap. I wish. I, I'm also interested in seeing that stadium, because um, I heard that stadium was absolutely bananas. Yeah, I could use an excuse to go to L.A., too. I've never been to L.A., well, um, that are, and, and Disney's also a factor in my decision as well. Avengers. Campus. I always forget there's a Disney out there. Everybody does. To me, it's Disney, dude. Disney's just in Florida, dude. Yeah. Mickey, Mickey Mouse is a Republican. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he was no, no, no. He was fighting the he was, the mouse was fighting that Republican down there. That crazy son of a bitch. Um, which is that? That's a funny story in and of itself. Um, that's a Taekwondo put up a good question. Who gets who gets disrespected more in the in the stadium that they share? With another team, the Clippers or the Chargers? Oh, the Clippers. Yeah, I'm going to say the Clippers as I'm well. going to say 100% the Clippers. <laughs> because, because, because the Chargers and the Rams just moved there. Yeah. Right? Like, especially the Chargers. The Chargers just came to L.A. Mm-hmm. The Clippers, yeah. the Clippers are like the Mets. They're good a couple of seasons and then they'll disappear. Yeah, yeah, they get good players every now and then. They get, they get, a, they get a pretty, not overrated, but they get, a, they get a franchise player everyone loves, but everyone kind of forgets about. Then it goes away. Then he, then he leaves. Yeah, so WrestleMania tickets are going on sale, so please be on the lookout uh, for that. Moving on, t- I don't really. There is another championship in AEW. Yeah. This is what you're seeing on your screen here, folks. Is the trios championship belts? Nice looking belts. I'm not gonna knock whoever designs their belts. They do a fantastic job. They look great. But I'm tired of championship belts in AEW. They're becoming participation trophies, and I'm oh, not dude. a fan. Uh, dude, I am not. Dude. I'm not a fan of it. Dude, <laughs> everyone gets an eighth place ribbon. <laughs> oh my god! No wonder the PC Twitter loves AEW. <laughs> it's a wonder I'm kind of pissed off at AEW. Here's the here's thing. Here's the thing. I love. The idea of trios titles. I love sure. the design of those titles. Yeah, they're very good looking titles. What they need to do is retire the tag team champions. And just make it straight trios from here yes, on out? There's no need to have both. Cause it's overkill. 
Yeah, there's you don't need this many divisions. Yeah. I haven't seen the the All Atlantic title on TV in <laughs> a long time. Who is to- who? Who's the champion for the All Atlantic? Uh, Pac. Oh yeah. I mean, if he's just on dark and elevation, fine. That's cool. You can put a belt on there because no other belt is going to be there. Yeah. So that's that's. I guess that's fine. It's just it's there, but it's not there. But yeah. there's no need to have tag titles and trios titles. Because I, what what are they doing? They're just taking the young bucks, going to add a third. <laughs> yeah. They're going to take already existing tag teams, just add a third, which is great. I like the idea, and they and if you're going to be honest with everything. AW should have never done tag titles to begin. I mean, I, I get it. They had a bunch of great tag teams. Their tag division is insane, you know. But if yeah. I wanted to stand out, let's get even more. Let's do fucking trios championships. Let's get fucking yeah. wild. Yeah. <laughs> let's get really wild because there is an artistry to a to a to a three team tag team. It's also different. Yeah. It's not something you see every day. Yeah, and I I would love for them to kind of just take that leap. But instead, they have. It's like it's like they they're like we're gonna do everything traditional. Then we're gonna experiment with this stuff right here. But like you gotta you gotta pick one. Dude, I just want to watch Vince McMahon watch a trios match <laughs> and lose his, his mind this, <laughs> and just have his mind. His, his watch go. Uh, he's he's gonna fume. He's gonna go all red. <laughs> steam's gonna come out of his ears. Mm-hmm. And then he's gonna explode. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, if the Freebird rules a thing, do you need a trios title? The answer is no. It's the Freebird rules thing, but they do not Freebird rule in AEW uh, that I'm aware of. No, they do not. Yeah, no. So, but yeah, it's just uh, with with the with the advent of a trios championship, if you include the ROH championships, which has been highlighted on one so-so premium live event, which was seen by Minimal, uh, which is all beat Jonathan Gresham and Jonathan Gresham then left AEW completely. Um, this makes sixteen active championships. If I if I count if you add our white stuff, sixteen active championships in AEW that are that are cycled around their television and, and internet streaming programs across across two different promotions, kind of. Kind of, yeah. That's a mess. That's a lot. I don't think. Oh, and you have an interim. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's right, because so CM Punk's you, injured. This you, is 17. You have, two, you have two world champions. <laughs> you, have two, <laughs> you have two world champions, a couple of mid-card champions, two tag, two different divisions of tag team champions. Uh, it's, it's a lot. They might have more titles in WWE, like all of WWE, including NXT. I'd have to, someone had to do a count for me about it. You know, who has the most titles right now. But I think AEW takes the cake. Yeah. And I don't like it. I think less titles are better. I think some titles are necessary. You obviously need a world title. You obviously need something for the women if you're going to, you know, do gender specific. Um, And some form of a tag title. And then mid cards, depending on how, depending on the size of your division. Yeah, I agree. Yes, yeah. keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, yeah, and, and have people fight for that and create storylines around those. But now it's just like, all right, we like the next thing you know, we're going to have a fucking. They're going to create another division, and have another title. They're going to be like what the what's what's AEW's next title? Flyweights. <laughs> it's true. You might actually be right. They can't call them cruise rates, but they're all high flyers. Call them flyweights. And flyweight's an actual division. It's just the play on words. It's just too good to pass up. <laughs> do you? How long do you think we, before we get a flyweight's division? January. I like that. Uh, if this if this happens, I'm gonna I'm gonna come right back to this to, to this conversation. Like Will called it. Dude, I had I've had a few Nostradamus effects recently. <laughs> my, my my guy my coworker the other day was just like, uh, you know what movie I do it? Movie I watched on TV the other day before he could finish today. I went Shawshank, and he's like, how'd you know? Because like, Shawshank's always on TV. It's true. <laughs> it's a great movie. Predicting the future, man. I got yeah. this. The flyweight yeah. division. I'm gonna I'm gonna tweet Tony Khan. Please, please, please tweet Tony. Or do tell Tony Khan to get get people who know what they're doing, or listen to people around him. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, moving on. Uh, we finally, hopefully, are saying goodbye to Ric Flair because this is how he came out, styling and profiling 
for his final match. I love that. I love he just wore a blue t-shirt. It's purple. It looks Whatever. purple to me. Yeah, it's purple. Whatever. I didn't watch the match. Yeah, he left bloody. I know. I, I know that. I saw his, like, four, I saw Taker, Mick Foley, and... Brett, your Brett favorite Hart man, huh? front row. Your favorite man, Bret Hart. I was like, damn, that's very surprising to see them there. Well, what else? Taker was doing, like, a one-man show or some shit like that. In the Dude, I feel, like, I feel like Bret Hart secretly thinks he's way better than Ric Flair. You think so? <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. That guy's ego. <laughs> <laughs> Ric Flair did a cosplay. Ric Flair, good job. Good job, Declan. I do like that. I did. Ric Flair obviously ended his match bloody. Because, of course, he did. And I believe, um, I want to say first Jeff... hour of AEW Dynamite World title. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's, that's a pretty good, good one. Triple T over there. <laughs> Triple T, top two squad. Um, Rick, I think Jeff Jarrett took the pin. So I doubt. I know it's figure four. I know it's a figure four. I think it was Jarrett because it sure as hell. I don't think it was Jay Lethal. So. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I hope so. Fuck so, Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> so is this is this the end for is this the end for Flair? Dude, I was wrong. He didn't die in the ring, so no. Everybody was surprised he didn't die in the He's ring. He's got one more match, baby. <laughs> him, and, him and Sting. Him and Sting in AEW. <laughs> Honestly. That might one be one more match. That dude. might be that might be the one. <laughs> dude, that's something I would pay to see. <laughs> Just him one and... more match between Sting and Flex. I you know why. Do I think Sting could carry Flair through another match? <laughs> I think he could do it. Oh man, what's up, Mister Fretz? Mister Fretz is off uh, Fretzelmania. Zip up when he came in. Good job. Tell us how it is, Fretz, because I heard they're uh, heard they're quite nice. I need to get us our zip up hoodies. By the way, you can go to our shop and get your zip-up hoodies very, very soon uh, when I make them. Just look up, click on the links below. Uh, but first and foremost, well, let's go into let's go into this. this is probably going to be our main slide right now. But let's talk about SummerSlam real quick. Yes, absolutely. Great Absol- card. Great card. <laughs> absolutely. Great card. I had a lot of fun with it. All right, so remember when we were going, like, a couple weeks ago, we were just like, I don't know about this card, man, for some reason. It looked like, it looked like they weren't doing anything, and all of a sudden, like, Vince retires, Trips is in charge, Stephanie is, a, is you know, the the face of the company, Nick Khan's running things below, and now there's just, like, this heightened optimism. And I didn't know if they were going to deliver, but, my Lord, they delivered a great card. Dude, here's the weird thing about SummerSlam. It was a lot of... Like, more of the same, yeah. but it felt completely fresh. Like, yeah. it, 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 it's, it feels like a brand new product, but it's not really that much different of a product. No, there's going to be slight, I think there's going to be slight changes here and there. But I want you guys to take a look real quick at this, at the picture we have up here. If you guys are watching us live. That's the entire crowd that we know of for, um, for SummerSlam this year. Yes, it was in a stadium. The uh, the attendance was like 48 some odd thousand. And if anybody knows anything about football stadiums, most football stadiums, on average, are at least 65,000. Because if you look back at the SummerSlam um, show in and of itself, which I found interesting, they never showed you the full stadium ever. I don't know if you picked up on that will at all. Kind of. It's like they only show like it's most like half of it. Because I was trying to see how much mm-hmm. of that stadium is actually full. Nissan, it's they only showed you the full part. That's and what that, I mean. Yeah. Like, because I was like, I was wondering how much is, like, how much this theme did they use, including the stage and everything? They used about, I would say, it looks six, like about three three quarters. Close to three quarters. I would say sixty five to seventy five percent of that stage. Yeah. Like you know, it, like, I, I'm I'm including the the ramp, the stage, everything. Yeah, yeah. I would say about sixty five to seventy five percent of that stadium was used and filled with people so here's the thing people are going to argue you know that oh we didn't sell out of state but here's the thing they don't have to all they have to do especially for most for their shows they're going towards a more of a stadium model with their events all they have to do is break the attendance number for the average people in a closed indoor basketball stadium and football stands will do that very easily oh yeah and yeah, the, they, and they and they make they'll make tons more money. They they didn't yeah. they didn't sell the stadium. I'm not gonna say on purpose, but yeah, like it's 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 not WrestleMania. Yeah, they don't have to. Like if this was a WrestleMania crowd, this would be a disappointment. Clear, yes. yeah, yes. 
but it's not at your second biggest part of the year. It did about half a number, which is fine. <laughs> which is perfectly fine. Like I said, they got to break that twenty thousand dollar, like not twenty thousand, like that twenty eighteen to twenty thousand people mark, and it's a success all around. Yeah, it's like, dude, don't don't <clears throat> don't let good be the evil of perfect. That whatever that yeah. whatever that saying goes, it's like this is still a major upgrade. Like they have pyro, right? Like yeah. it was it was shot and presented like a big deal. Like what are you complaining about? Yeah, I just you're, you're just looking to be mad at something, <laughs> asshole. Yeah, and so that, that's that's the thing you want to you want to keep in context because WWE is going to more doing a more stadium model, and they don't have to sell out if they can break. If they can break twenty thousand, which they will do easily, for most of these events, it's a success. It's a success. Yeah, I agree. It's a major you know? success. It's a major success. Yeah, that that's the genius. That's the genius of moving towards a stadium model. And it looked yeah. full. It looked full because they presented it well. I mean, you can you can shit what you want about Kevin Dunn and his cuts, but it looked great. It, like it looked great. And I love the out. I, I hate when I do this with the camera. It's <laughs> fucking crazy. I I love the I love the outdoor feel. It was summer. It was good weather. Like I love daytime wrestling. Yeah, it was I great. I loved that first match was daytime <laughs> wrestling. I I thought I thought it made the match more memorable. I think it did. I mean, and the match itself was memorable. Uh, before we go to to daytime, let's go to the nighttime because I don't want to. I don't want to waste any more time, and I want to talk about Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Brock coming out with a fucking tractor, as if he couldn't get more country. He looked so happy. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He looked. He looked like a kid who got everything he wanted. Like so, you remember how the report came out that Brock was going to leave. Once yeah. Vince left, and Triple H is probably like, no, 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 no. Guess what? We'll let you come out in the tractor at SummerSlam. I'm back in, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Just when I thought I was out, <laughs> you pulled me right back in. <laughs> My lord, what a match! I have shitted on Roman and Brock because they've had lackluster matches because either someone gets injured or we're not into it or we're throwing beach balls around or something happens. They put on their best match ever. Goddamn time! I know it took them years, but they put on their best match ever. I was invested. There was ridiculousness. There was a tractor. Brock, Brock lifted the wrestling ring. Wait, the thing. If you if you if you take out all that Gaga, as Pat Paris would call it, is it still a phenomenal match, or did they, did the match need the Gaga? I think for them, great great finish. I love the finish. Yeah, I love I love the fake cash in. It's I, just did if you take if you take out the Gaga of lifting the in the tractor, is it still that great of a match? So I'm just gonna take the tractor out of the last man standing match. Yeah, come out come out in the tractor, fine, but then don't use don't, it. Don't use it. Yeah. Um, I still think there's enough there to make it a great match. I mean, even. Oh, yeah. In and of itself, I mean, look, the, the tractor spot's phenomenal. People are pissed off who got, got those seats in the corner, though, but whatever. Um, I yeah, think- I was thinking, I think that sucks. <laughs> that really sucks. You just look at the end of the ring for the rest of the match. Yeah. Um, I think there's enough other memorable moments, like Brock not going down every time he gets hit. Like, him just keep on getting back up is a great moment. Him F5-ing Paul Heyman through an announce table. Yes, that... that- <laughs> that needed to happen. <laughs> you know. That's the end that's the end of the story for him. Yeah. It, it, mm-hmm. it felt like it it was the conclusion. Yeah. Him it was at, a satisfying conclusion. You know, Austin Theory trying being a fucking idiot and trying to cash in. <laughs> One F five. <laughs> All the day Roman's like, I'm gonna take this bash over the back with it and then use it to beat the fuck out of Brock. <laughs> I love that too. You know, it was need to throw it into the crowd. Oh no, no, because they'd never see that briefcase again. No, and that could that probably kill someone. Yeah, it's got a mean frisbee. <laughs> um, you also had what I also liked about this is that they like it's one thing to put somebody through a table; it's another thing to use that broken part of a table and throw somebody through it again. Like, remember when Brock took Roman and just threw him through the through the broken part of a table? Yeah. I was like, wow. That was <laughs> like, pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, like, it was it was crazy. This was a great ender. Um, I don't know if you saw the video afterwards. Brock got into the ring 
like I, while it was still elevated and like tipped his hat to the crowd. Apparently backstage he came back to uh, standing ovation, which he deserved. It was a, it's a fantastic Brock performance. Yeah. Fantastic Roman performance. Like it yeah, is a fantastic I'm, performance. I'm sure Brock gets a standing O every time he comes to the curtain. Well, not that one time after WrestleMania when he threw the belt of Vince. Yeah, okay, so other than that. <laughs> <laughs> and that other time where Jericho thought that he actually um busted Randy open. Like when yeah, okay. Jericho thought right, he went right, off script. Okay, yeah, yeah, you got it? Okay. That was pretty funny. Jer- Jericho got worked. Jericho got worked by his own person. Um It was just, it was just so good. I'm like, this is the match. But if you take all the hoopla out of it, their best match would still be their first one, WrestleMania 31. Okay. You know, but this as an ender, if this is the end, great way to go by both of them. Roman looked strong. Brock looked even stronger because he just wouldn't go down. <laughs> yeah. He's like a goonie. <laughs> I just didn't say die. Yeah, he just wouldn't go down. It was uh, it was great. I loved it. I I don't I don't think they needed to pile all the shit on top of him. The visual afterwards was great. The visual was great, but he could have stood on his chest afterwards. You know what it is? It was they had to because of the way they built it. Because he got hit with the world title, he got back up. Got hit with yeah. the universal title, he got back up. Yeah. So it's like, all right, we just have to fucking bury you so that you don't get fucking back up in time. That's why they did it. Yeah. So it's overdone. It works. It does work, but it's it's overdone. I I can look past because everything else in that match was fantastic. Fair enough. Everything else in that match was fantastic. Great way to end SummerSlam. One of the most memorable SummerSlam endings ever. Ever and who knows what? Who knows if Brock's out of his contract? If he's done, he's gonna take some break. He deserves it. Cowboy Brock should live on forever. Like when when Brock gets his eventual statue, because everybody loves these statues. It should be him with the cowboy hat. Oh my <laughs> god, dude, that you could make a great case for that. <laughs> Damn, that's a debate worth having. Cowboy. It's not gonna be Boombox Brock because Boombox Brock would be me because I'm no. I'm an it would asshole. need to be it would need to be UFC Brock. Like I would hire the you know, take a Brock. I hope his statue is just permanently sweaty and red. <laughs> like every t- like every time you touch it, it starts perspiring. Yeah, yeah. This, 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 it condensates. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. You press the button, the basic goes ah. Oh! <laughs> it starts bouncing around. <laughs> yeah, it starts bouncing around. <laughs> Oh my god! You get to if you <laughs> if you if you mess with it too much, it starts to suplex you. <laughs> Pick you up. Yeah, right. Oh my god! All right, let's move on to the to the, to the day day wrestling match. We had Bianca versus Becky. They just go well together. Yeah, match is great. I think it's their best match too. It is their best match. I love the finish, the Spanish fly. This, the finish, the finish was, I, because Becky had a great false finish. Oh, with right? the, with the pulling the hair to with, the manhandle? With the hair, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the hair into the manhandle was a great false finish. Yeah. And then, and then Bianca just went right into the finish. It was a, it was a great finish. Yeah. It was fantastic. And apparently, as we found out on Monday, Raw, on Monday Night Raw, Becky separated her, separated shoulder, her shoulder early on. Yeah, she'll be out a few weeks. She'll be fine. Separate, yeah, so yeah, no, she'll be a couple of months probably. She'll be fine. Cause you when, think you think a separate shoulder takes that long? Remember when Sami Zayn separated his shoulder, like just raving his hands in the air? He was out for like six, eight months. Oh fuck yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but when when because I knew something was wrong, because especially when Bianca hit that last KOD, I saw Becky like holding. Her, I was like, oh, she broke her collarbone. Mm. But apparently, it's a whole separated fucking shoulder. Um, yeah, dude, I've separated my shoulder. I couldn't move it. Like, it past sucks. Here. I couldn't move it past here. Yeah. I couldn't go in a full circle. In fact, my collarbone's still fucked up. Yeah. It sucks. But, I mean, listen. Does she need surgery? I believe so. Uh, she needs surgery. Yeah, she's going to be out six, nine months. She'll be back for the rumble. Yeah. Which is fine. Because you know what? I like that they also... They ended, they ended the story of big-time Becky Lynch. 
A lot of conclusions in this SummerSlam. Yeah, and the, I mean, they also ended it on Raw, too. Becky came out first. Yeah, it was great. Know, yeah, the man, beyond, thank God the man's back. You know what? And, but, like, I got to give kudos to Becky because big time Becky Lynch was not supposed to go over. Like, that was a that should have been a dead in the water gimmick, and she did everything in her power and got it over. She and tried, for me she, at least. She, she got. Um, she did everything she could with that gimmick, and it, and it worked well. She got people to hate her. And, like, it's probably her best selling and her best character development. Because the man is natural to Becky. This best, was best, in, best in-ring work. Best in-ring work was big time for Becky sure. Lynch. Yes. For sure. A thousand percent. Yeah, best character in-ring work. work it, didn't, it, just, it didn't hold the candle to the man. Because the man's natural. This one, she tried. Um, successful yeah. or not, it's, it's a matter of opinion. I think in the end it was successful. Because she got people to hate her and dislike Res- respect, her. Respect yeah. her for taking the risk. She took, like, it's one of those things, like, she she could have easily, like, other performers less of her and said, no, I'm not doing it. And gotten to that, you know, that back and forth argument with, with Or creative. she just went straight back to going, being the man and knowing what works. Like, yeah. you know, she, she could have just took, quote, the easy way out. I'll, air quotes. Yeah. But so. she didn't. And she yeah. she went with this and got as much out of it as she probably could. And kudos to her. The outfits were the best part. Yeah, the Lady Gaga style yeah. outfits, you know. Yeah, yeah she, was just Lady, she was Lady Gaga as a heel. And I think that without this big time, I don't think you get Bianca where she is today. Because, like, for a year, Becky did her damnedest to make sure Bianca got over. And it worked in the end. Yeah, moreover. Yeah. 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 A little more, in... little more, little more cred. Yeah, a little more cred. So and, what... Bianca, and Bianca also developed heavily as well. Yes. She her, she does she does not have a bad match. Yeah, her in ring work is phenomenal, and yeah. it's a blessing in disguise that Becky beat her at SummerSlam last year, because I think it was a wake up call. I won't go that far. <laughs> I don't like the I don't like the call at all from last year, but I think it's it's one of those things where like it made her better. If wrestling was real, it would. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be it as it may, but what no one saw coming, and not me, is you heard the heavenly, heavenly sounds of Bailey's of Bailey's music, and Bailey's back, which surprised the crap out of me, and also surprised the crap out of Bianca if you saw her face. <laughs> Bailey came down looking phenomenal, by the way. With her baggy pants and all, and then I, I miss them tiggle biddies. <laughs> I used to get Haley's uh, Haley. Bailey. I used to get Bailey has a fucking rack and ass. Yeah, she's she's Pamela Martinez. Yeah, dude, that's, my, that's what she is. <laughs> but it wasn't just Bailey, which Bailey coming back would have been surprise enough. We also had Dakota Kai. And I was with, I was with my grandma, and I was like, she's fired, right? Like, we fired her. Yeah, I said, I said do you work here? When did that happen? Yeah. I was like, she's fired, right? Like, we, like I remember talking about something like, she is fired. But Dakota Kai looking like a new age Dakota Kai, which I was like, all right, this is kind of weird. And then all of a sudden, I was like, oh, my God, finally, EO Shirai coming in like a crazy drunk white chick. I was like, this is amazing. I was like, why can she not walk a straight line right now? Like, I understand. I did, I did, think, I did think she was drunk. I was yeah. like, Yo, she's she's just, she's wine drunk right now. <laughs> Eo, Eo Sky. I like Eo Sky. I think it's a better name. I like Eo Sky because I believe Shirai's her real name. You know how WWE doesn't like to use people's real names. Fair enough. Also, I was just like, yeah, Vince was Vince Vince booked this. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, Triple H, Triple H. I was like, no, 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 no. The name change, is, name change is still there. That's that's all Vince. <laughs> well, it has Vince's fingerprints. This car, I'm telling you, this car had Vince's fingerprints mm-hmm. all over it. So now you have this new faction of the Shield. I mean, Bailey, Dakota Kai, and Eel Dude, Sky. it's just it's just three <laughs> different versions of Avril Lavigne. <laughs> <laughs> And like K Murphy, <laughs> <laughs> was K Murphy EO? Uh, I was thinking K uh, K Murphy's uh, Dakota. Okay, fair. Yeah, you got Avril Lavigne, K Murphy, and like ah oh, fuck, I need another one. Uh, uh, mm. uh, Avril Lavigne again. All right, sure. That works. Ever, but... the, the lead singer from Evanescence. Oh yeah, that girl. Yeah, that can be EO. There we go. Yeah. I made I made the joke work. There you go, <laughs> but I I I love it. 
I was like, wow, this is a very big shock to the system uh, that we needed. It's what the women's division really needed because I remember, I know last week we were like, someone needs to steer a ship known as the women's division. And that's why I thought Bianca was going to keep it. And now Bianca has challengers, which is good. And it's interesting. It's, so now Bianca Challenge is going to be interesting to see what they do for SmackDown if they bring some more women up as well. But welcome back, Bailey. I can't wait to see her back in the ring um, because we're not getting Charlotte anytime soon. Bailey's great. And this also helped to turn Becky face before she went out. Yes, she's going to come back to a massive pop. Yep. And let me tell you, dude, notice they had Becky turn face yeah. and Ronda turn heel. On this card. WrestleMania. Fuck yeah. They're setting it up. Again, Vince. <laughs> All over it. Yeah, it, that, that's WrestleMania. That's WrestleMania. Um, I love this group. I think the three of them are going to work very well. I think this is a great spot for Bailey, putting in her leadership position. I think, like, in any group Bailey's been in, she's kind of always been a number two. Like, her and Sasha were pretty even. Yeah. But Bailey has never taken charge. Bailey is never on top. You get my drift. Yeah, I, I now I like I, now I, now I like her on top. Yes, I, I I assume that you did, but yeah, no, this is good. <laughs> I like I like her I like her taking charge, baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be good for Bailey because, like you said, especially if she's especially if her if she's not ready to go. I mean, she looks like she's ready to go, but you never know with with, with knee injuries and stuff like that. Um, so if she can lead these two people, um, Dakota, Io, uh, I think it's a good position for her. I also I also thought it was a Sasha B. Huh? Huh? You want to come back now? Huh? <laughs> hey, 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 Naomi, Naomi, you want it, you want it on this? You want to come back? You want to come back? You want to come back? Hey, 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 It's still to be known. SmackDown is a couple of days away, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> We will see what happens. To be honest with you, when I when this was all going on, and then they're like, "Oh, there's three of you, two of me." I was like, "Oh, Sasha's coming, isn't she?" Like I like I kind of felt that to like even it out. Sasha comes back. Naomi still gl- <laughs> Naomi doesn't. <laughs> I mean, Naomi would also be good, but it's also daytime, so like you don't have the full glow effect. Yeah, no. Yeah, I really I really liked daytime wrestling for them. I thought again, match placement in this card was phenomenal. Oh yeah, yeah, very As good always. for them to start out for them to start out hot. They just fucking nailed it, dude. Also, Kid Rock. Ooh, I was getting, getting, getting I was black go- screen. I was gonna skip that. I was. Oh. Uh, I thought it was so funny. And I was <laughs> like, dude, I love you, Kid Rock. I hate you, but this, this whole not getting a fuck. You intentionally pissing off WWE makes me very happy. Well, that, well, I thought I thought he was banned after what he did in New Orleans. I did too, which I was shocked to see him. But hey, man, anything for a paycheck, am I right? Oh my God, Kid Rock is the epitome of white trash. <laughs> And he really who, is. Who was that woman? Does my thing is, did Kid Rock know that woman that was next to him? I, I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> she, you, he, he had to. I mean, you would, again, I you t- would hope. I, he had his arm around her, and I could totally just see Kid Rock going to that event alone, though. Yeah. I could also see Kid Rock just smashing a fat white chick from Nashville. Yeah. It's, yeah. Everything about it was believable. I believe everything <laughs> about this story. Remember you tell he... me Kid Rock is a Scientologist. I'm like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when he was going to like run for U.S. Senate? No. <laughs> uh, dude, you might want to take a page book from Dr. Oz and not do a Dr. Oz. Anyway, been fucking anything. Well, Dr. Oz, well, Dr. Oz doesn't hold numbers. He was trying to hang his hat on the Trump train, and that was a bad idea. Um, now, but... Pennsylvania is a good idea. He's just not running he's not actually doing a campaign yeah, it's like, he's, no. it's like that the big thinks he thinks he already won <laughs> what a fucking idiot um but move on also match placement the miz versus logan paul in two matches logan paul has become the best celebrity wrestler ever yeah you can't <laughs> deny the kid's talent the kids the kid's phenomenal i'm so like i was i was very impressed Oh, that phenomenal Admiral. forearm was ass. He didn't cock it. He is, he didn't he didn't move his forearm. He is kind of like trust fall with his forearm. <laughs> Listen, That's a terrible phenomenal forearm. But he nailed the frog splash. Listen, like, like I said, I was impressed at um at Mania. I was like, wow, he's really good. But I was blown away at what he pulled off at SummerSlam. Yeah, absolutely blown away. You know what blew me away? Will is when he's going for the frog splash, as you can see here in our photo. He switched his body mid air. Mm. 
I so did not make, notice that. If you watch the replay in slow mo, he he contorts his body so that he hits Miss Flush and right on the chest like he's supposed to. And it's fabulous. It makes the move, it makes the match. I didn't think he was athletic enough to pull this off. Because I was like, is he pulling a Shane McMahon right now? I was like, is he going to make this? Because I, I also thought he's going for the elbow drop. Okay, cool. Easy. When he did frog splash, I was like, oh, oh, wow. I, the elbow drop. I do like, dude, I'm a sucker for an elbow drop. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I love Bailey's. I, like, I, I, I love punks. I just, I love elbow drops. Elbow drops are great. I uh, feel like it's something I would do in real life. I would drop an elbow on someone's throat. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, he's good. I think De I think he has a great future in WWE. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. I think him and Bobby Lashley would be a great match. I want to and I I talked to this, my friend Kafer who showed up to uh SummerSlam to watch it. I think down the road him and Montez. That's oh my say less. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Him and Montez going at it. I mean, him and AJ, him and Edge. Yeah, I mean, he, the sky's the limit for this guy. Say what you want about whatever the fuck else he does. He's really fucking good at this. I could see him and Kevin <laughs> Owens having a great match, too. Yeah, he's gonna, obviously he's going to need some polishing on the mic and all that other stuff. But, like, he's really good at this. <laughs> for someone so green, he has shown up and performed in the on the two biggest stages WWE has ever. In a year, he's gonna make so much money for that company. Yeah, it's he's gonna, dude. He's he's on. I think it's a five million dollar deal. He's gonna he's for, gonna for three years. He's gonna three. make that. He's gonna make that money for them and merchandise alone. Yeah, Mer yeah, and just explosion plus like it's crazy. He's getting good money, and he's earned it. I think no no shadow of doubt because. Here's a guy, Logan Paul. You can hate Logan Paul. We've had plenty of reasons to hate Logan Paul mm -hmm. and his brother, Jake Paul. But he is a self-made man. He is. He is everything people love and hate about Gen Z because Gen Z can literally make it on their own by doing nothing. <clears throat> but they can also make it on their own by doing nothing. <laughs> and people love that and people hate that. Yeah. And it's 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 absolutely wild. Um, I don't know. He uh, he has a podcast called Impulsive TV, which uh, a great play. He had Triple H on. It's uh, allegedly the top. Mm. It's uh, allegedly he is the number one podcast in the country now. Which was news to me. Um, I still think it's Rogan. I don't think it's Rogan. I think Rogan might have dropped, but I don't know if he dropped that significantly. I but, can see Jake Paul being a top five podcast. I never I've never heard of his podcast until. Recently, but I yeah. believe it, dude. Millennials and Gen Z, Gen Z specifically fucking loves this guy. Yeah, did you? So Triple H was on the um, Impulsive TV apparently this week. Yeah. And, and so I don't know if you saw the clip. He's a guy I'd never fucking heard of him. <laughs> which, which, the, which, duh. Yeah, dude, Triple H has no idea who Jake Paul is. Or Logan he Paul. says, you know, he's like, Triple H, be honest. What were your thoughts when you said we're going to sign Jake Paul? Triple H, because my response was, who the fuck is that guy? Yeah, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> a lot of people thought that. <laughs> but I bet you he's fucking happy that he did. Holy shit. And, like, what a perfect person to go up against to start out is The Miz. The Miz is not going to get him hurt. The Miz is going to guide him if he needs to guide him. And you also had AJ Styles in the mix, too, probably helping him out legitimately backstage. Like, Yeah, I bet everyone's helping him. You yeah. kidding me? I mean, listen, I bet, I bet there's some boys in the back who are jealous. Yeah, of course. But there's also some boys in the back who go, I'm going to make this guy a fucking star. Mm hmm And, like, AJ, I think, is definitely one of them. Uh, Miz. Like Miz, for sure. Mm hmm uh, I mean, Finn Balor. Yeah. Like, there's Ray. There's definitely a lot of these guys who want to see this guy succeed. Yeah. He's in the best spot that he could be. And, and that's not even going to the PC. And then you got to yeah. go to the PC with Shawn fucking Michaels. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who runs the show? And like, it's it's amazing. It's it's absolutely amazing. And he's he's a, and he's a naturally gifted athlete, and he's taking and it. Sean, like can, Sean can still wrestle. He just doesn't. I, I want agree. To. With triple, I agree with Triple T over here. Logan Paul in two matches is better than Dominic Mysterio. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I agree. You know what it is? He sells so good too. 
He does. He's a good seller. And also, shout out to Dominic's mullet looking like Eddie. <laughs> it's he's just, He looks more and more like 1997 Eddie Guerrero. And, yeah, that's got to come into play somewhere in the storyline. Uh, let's move on. Speaking of uh, speaking of people who just go up against Logan Paul, but the Usos and the Street Profits. Besides the fact that the Street Profits came out looking like the Tennessee Titans, which again, great great costume design. I was like, oh, you're losing. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're totally losing. Did they drop the ball with not giving the Street Profits the titles here? I don't know. Um, if Montez turns or if Dawkins turns, no. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. However, if they just off TV for a while and they don't really do anything, they're not in storylines, they're just kind of not active, a thousand percent. Ten thousand percent. You got a hot act in Montez Ford and an even hotter act in the team of the Street Profits. If you let them fall, fall to the wayside right now, you fucked up royally. Yeah, what I think they're doing um, in particular is that on, if they're going to do it the way that they did it on Raw, is that they're still going to be a team. They're going to try to New Day it for a while. Like, it'll still be the Street Profits, or they'll have singles matches. Like, Montez went up against Seth Rollins on Monday. Yeah. And that, that's a huge deal. Like he yeah, went a, that is a very huge deal. Yeah, you know, he went one on one against Seth Rollins. I mean, if you want to do the Montez push with Dawkins, is there? Sure. Weird, but okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if you want Dawkins to just eat a pin so Tez doesn't have to, okay, I guess. Yeah. I don't well, think it's gonna work as well as you think it will. Okay. We'll, we'll we'll see what happens. I mean, the New Day is the only the only team I know that's been able to kind of buck that trend and still be like the New Day, but still also have single stuff. Um, maybe because it's three of them, so there's not really anybody left out if need be, which might be that might be the formula for it. Yeah, but New Day has been relevant in years since Kofi. Really, since Kofi dropped the belt, the New Day really hasn't been relevant. No, it's not true. Biggie won the uh, Biggie won the world title. And then he he was he was split from New Day. That's they split true. him up. They split but when him up he after. but when he won, he was back on Raw with them. Well, okay. The, the, so the members of New Day have been success and relevant because Biggie's been very relevant. But the team yeah. as a New Day and the focus of the New Day as a faction has not been relevant. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah, because the, the focus hasn't been on them as a faction. Yeah, the yeah. focus they, they 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 pushed Big E, but that's not pushing New Day. That's pushing mm -hmm. Big E. And they had Xavier win King of the Ring, which is also kind of a thing that they wanted to do as well. And then he got and then he got hurt again. Yeah, they all they all got hurt. And, well, Big E is really one that got hurt, and I fucked everything up. Yeah. Um, but I mean, another solid match: Bobby Usos and the Street Profits. Well, we'll see what happens from there. Where do the Usos go from here? Too is also another question. Like who, who else do they have, who else do they have to fight? I have no idea. Besides the Viking Raiders, who've been trying to build up on SmackDown. Unless they bring back Biff Busick and the other guy, Oni Lorca, Danny Birch. Danny Birch, my fault. Yeah. I think. I mean, sh this needs you need some workers, dude. Like, fuck it, sign the Briscoes. They're not doing shit in AEW. Unless you reform <laughs> DIY. Well, yeah. Oh, by the way, let's hold on. I do want to uh, thank you for bringing that up. Where is John Gargano? Where did Where did the rumor start that Johnny Gargano was going to show up? And where on this card would that have fucking happened? It would have. It, so the rumor was that since Seth pulled out with uh, Riddle. And Triple H t tweeted, I hear you. People jump to conclusions because they're stupid and assume Seth is going to have a match. I assumed Seth was going to have a match because that's what, that's what Twitter said. When yeah. he didn't, I didn't get mad about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought the angle was a little weird. But yeah, I, I thought I didn't think I thought it was possible Johnny could show up. But I thought it was going to be the same thing as WrestleMania. So I take it back. You're not stupid, but you, you, you're a fool. Yeah, I was like, but, like, why did everybody jump to Gargano? Like, he's not even from Tennessee. He's from Ohio. Like, I granted, yes, he was going to be in there for, like, StarCast or, like, Flair shit or whatever. But, like, I just didn't, I <laughs> K, didn't see a way to wiggle him me. K texted me on Saturday. It's like, it's going to be Dolph Ziggler. I was like, <laughs> I don't know if she was ribbing me or not. I don't know if they were ribbing me or if they were serious. <laughs> I think they were ribbing you. Okay, so if you were ribbing me, you fucking got me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, speaking of got me too, Pat McAfee again, number fucking great performance. Yeah, a lot of fun, dude. This card was fun. I popped an edible and had a great time. We <laughs> go to the pizza, 
Got two liter of Pepsi. I had a great time watching this. I movie. loved Pat McAfee's bomb ass Corbin choir at the top of the arena. Dude, it it didn't <laughs> it didn't work. The crowd did. I'm not gonna lie. The crowd didn't care for the choir. I thought it was funny as shit. His 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 theme. Phenomenal. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. It's a, it's perfect. It was amazing. It fit <laughs> Pat McAfee so well because it's just annoying enough to be cool. I love. I also love how Michael Cole has a little bit more freedom to defend his people. Like, he was going off on Corbin. Dude, Michael Cole, yeah. I told you who's going to benefit the most from Vince retiring. It's fucking Michael Cole. I mm-hmm. told all of you. <laughs> did you? And you what, all believed me. I did you? Ho- did you hear what Corey Graves said? No. Corey just... Graves summon, said something to the effect of, and he was saying it in kayfabe, but it was kind of breaking the fourth wall. He goes, "I liked it more when you weren't allowed to like speak your mind or whatever." Yes, I do remember that. And then Michael Cole's like, "A lot of things have changed in the last couple of days." Yeah, <laughs> a lot of things have changed. He's like, he's like, it's. Let me see about Brock. He's like, just stay down, Brock. He's like, you're gonna kill him or something. <laughs> yeah. Or, or someone stop the damn match or something. He, yeah. like, he, I was like, Michael Cole can finally do his JR impression. Finally. <laughs> finally, he can do his JR isms. You know what would be the big flex? It's never gonna happen. But what if, what if Triple H brings back Morrow? God. Dude, I. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. Okay, hold on. Pause, 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 pause. He goes back to NXT because there's no space for him on the main I roster. I think Morrow and McAfee would be <laughs> the greatest duo ever. You'd have because, to you'd have to because, put a live streaming cam on them, and you'd have to be able to watch it instead of watching like the main feed. I feel like Morrow. I feel like McAfee would start doing handstands while doing commentary. <laughs> He's so excited to keep up with Morrow. Or, like Morrow would just say something ridiculous, and Pet McAfee would go, "I have no idea what that means, but yes." <laughs> like, they would be the fucking best. <laughs> Please, I want that. <laughs> and I love Michael Cole and Pat McAfee. <laughs> They're so good. Yeah. Um. And Corbin's good too. We got to give Corbin props. Give yeah, Corbin the props as well. He's so, he's so good at being hated. Yeah. <laughs> he's so good at being hated. He takes anything that they give him and he makes it like, can I make this more detestable? Yes, I can. <laughs> Dude, Corbin's a Hall of Famer. I will not hear anything else. I'll give him that. He needs a singles title, but I'll give him that. He's never won a title. No, he won the U.S. <laughs> Did he win a title? No, he has an IC I, title. Did he win the IC? I don't know if he won the he IC. He won the IC. If, I think he won Early, the IC right? No, it, it, was that, it was that ugly one for a while. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if Corbin's actually won a singles. I know he hasn't won a tag. He hasn't won a tag. He was yeah. U.S. champ according to the Quan. Thanks, the Quan. Yeah, the Quan knows fucking everything. Thank you, top tier, the Quan. T3, baby. Triple T. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I think yeah, I think it's US champion. United States once, right? United States, that's it. One time United States champion. Other than that, he is he won King of the Ring, Andre a Giant, Money in the Bank, everything but a title. And most hated of the year twenty eighteen. You want a slammy. Yeah, no, that that's Hall of Fame enough. Most hated of the year. I love it. Although yeah, United States. Yeah, dude, uh, did I say I see him in the United States? I read United States, but I said I see. <laughs> yeah, it's U.S. Yeah. Um. I had, okay. Never mind. I lost it on Corbin. It's okay, but yeah. No props to Corbin. Corbin's a Hall of Famer. I'll give him that. Yeah, I'll give him that. Yeah. Oh, he'll get he'll get the Hall of Fame eventually, but like he'll get there, you know. Um, and so we had Dominic. You had the Mysterios versus um, Judgment Day and the Return of Edge. Eh. This was an uh, the Edge was not an air at all. Edge was just he's ripped and. Um, wow! Great. That yeah. I love. I love when Edge really spears someone. <laughs> like when Edge wants to spear you, he's gonna spear the fuck out of you. Yeah. No one gives a better spear than Edge. But the match was just eh for me. Judgment Day is an eh for me. The story is Edge returning, but what makes Judgment Day better, at least in the last couple weeks, is Rhea Ripley. She's like the troll of the whole thing. Rhea Ripley helps. Rhea yeah. Ripley. Thank God she's back. 
Yeah. Because she she is she is the best part of Judgment Day right now. Yeah, she is. Just, I like I like Damien's with promos. I like Damien's promos. Scotty Pippen of WWE. Dude, it's like they each they each have one part of the Bret Hart scale. <laughs> <laughs> Finn's the in ring. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Damien's the mics and Rhea's the looks. looks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. It sucked without Edge as a leader, but that was a whole that was a whole thing with creative, which Edge kind of spoke about on Monday. Where he was like creatively, blah blah blah, Judgment Day was supposed to be this. And then like he 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 like Edge, he's like, Yeah, you can boo it. Go ahead, you can boo it. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was like, Wow, all right. Uh, Edge, We're doing Edge this. Is... <laughs> I don't. The turn. The turn confuses me because uh, Edge's Edge's whole th- thing about it. Edge's whole point was to get someone over, to get, get to get to get the overlooked guys over. Yeah. So in a sense, he's still fulfilling that goal. He's yes. giving his spot to Finn Balor and trying to get him over. As an as a more of a NJPW style Finn, yes. So it's it's weird. It there's, is, there's, it's multi, there's multi layers to Judgment Day thing, which kind of makes my head hurt. <laughs> oh wow, it's a card with the reference. Judgment Day's Voltron form is Bret Hart. That's amazing. I do. I love this Triple T. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> it's Bret Hart, my God, that is fantastic. And speaking of spears, Edge did spear the shit out of Dominic to end fucking. Raw. Dude, I love how Dominic is still getting hazed, and he's been there for two years. <laughs> Do you remember when <laughs> Roman threw him like off camera, like yeah, off yeah, they threw him off camera. So he landed in a mattress, yeah. and, they, and they, cut, they yelled "cut," and then had him on the floor selling. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I was waiting for Dominic to turn on Ray, but that's not gonna happen. I also love how every now and then. Ray's gear will just be a giant advertisement for something Spanish. Yeah, his his match was it was av- the beer. Was the beer? Yeah, it was the beer. But before I think I think I, I think last year's SummerSlam was like a different beer. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. like Modelo or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was Modelo, but it was something like actually. It, it was another Spanish beer. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, it was. I was like, Ray, where do you get these sponsorships from? <laughs> it's WWE, dude. <laughs> no, I think it's Ray. Ray's like, hey, man. I got this beer and they want to sponsor me. Can we it's do called, it? It's called it's called La Raza. <laughs> hey, hey. hey. Conan's brand, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably, and they're like, yeah, sure, okay, wait, whatever. How much are they paying us? How many zeros? Shit, really? That's how much? <laughs> All right, <laughs> yeah. Oh, goddamn, pal. Come on <laughs> in. <laughs> Oh my god, that's fantastic. So this adds and adds Judgment Day, Ray storyline thing as well. Whatever, Dominic's gonna get be the ass of this for a while. And you kind of got your point around, Will, with the uh, with the Ronda and Liv Morgan. Dude, what a shitty match! <laughs> this match was awful. The I love the finish. I love the creative finish. The finish, I like. I do. I do like the finish. I do like the finish. The finish is very believable. But I was like, oh, Liv, that's one way to save Liv. <laughs> Liv got fucking ragdolled. Yes, you did. You would, you, they're booking Liv like she still has the briefcase. <laughs> 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 like, she just didn't look, she looked awful, and she looked like she was going to cry on her way down to the ring. You, okay, like, I, got, I, got, I said with Bianca, like, you got it big time. You got you're in the big times now. You can't be doing that shit. Yeah. Like act like you've been there before. I just it's one of those things. She just does like, like I love Liv, cool chick, whatever. Like, there's something missing from her in ring work. I think there's a lot of pieces missing to Liv Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? Because you know when when somebody's like when somebody's cautious, they're like go full speed, but they're not. They're cautious. They don't want to like hit themselves. They kind of like twinkle toe into like moves. Okay. You know, she kind of okay, she, she kind of like stutter steps in the moves a lot, like she's very cautious, and is not going like full out and like it doesn't seem like she's competent in getting to the moves and to the spots that she needs to get to. Yeah, I like the blue tongue though. Everybody loves that was, the blue that tongue. Was, that was a good callback. Do you know the story of the blue tongue? 
No, I couldn't think of a joke in time. No. Nah. <laughs> she was literally, like, eating, like, it was like a Jolly Rancher or something before a match. And it turned her tongue blue because that's what it's supposed to fucking do. And then people on social media were like, oh, that's a cool thing. And so she just start, she kept doing it. I wonder what she used. It's probably just candy. Could you like a sugar rush? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, how long does Dry Ranch like stay like that? A while. I mean, enough. Like, if you do it before, like, yeah, she's just mass. in the bag as popping, <laughs> popping, popping, popping Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> yeah, right. I think all you need is one. Fun and dip. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I think the story here is everything after the match. Live smartly got her way out of a out of a match and still won it. And yeah. Ronda made the referee look like shit. I was like, I was like, ref, the last thing you're supposed to do is touch Ronda when she's mad. Like, I know that. Yeah, duh. Man, I, I would, and that's why, dude, that's why I would touch her when she's mad. She can fucking ragdoll me. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, that was so cool. Do it again, do it again. God, getting ragdolled by Ronda Rousey. <laughs> Woo! I love how, like, when the officials came into the ring and tried to get Ronda to calm down, they, like, stood, like, five feet away from her at all times. Dude, every time Ronda Rousey wrestles, I'm like, how are your tits just not popping out? Every single time, dude. She wears, like the, she wears the loosest shirts with the tightest bra. I don't know how she does it. I don't know either. Ronda's Ronda. It's incredible. I, I don't, yeah, I'm, but now we have here Ronda. Thank which God. Is where, which Thank is where she's the most God. natural at. Yeah. Um, and Liv cheated her way to win. Liv survived. Yeah. And now she's going to get fed. <laughs> that in in Great Britain, <laughs> Ron, that crowd. Oh, here's a thing, dude. Ronda is gonna win, and the UK is gonna fucking cheer her. <laughs> They're gonna cheer the fuck out of Ronda Rousey. It's oh god damn it. Well, I told you, I told you this wasn't gonna work. <laughs> I told you because people love Liv, and people are gonna be mad at Ronda for the wrong reason. But here's the thing: Ronda's apparently a storyline suspended. Yeah, yeah, bullshit. Yeah, storyline suspended. She'll be back soon. Oh, no, that's fine, her being suspended. That's totally fine. That makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. She'll be back soon. So overall, someone, someone was like, oh, she's still a face. It was like, she's still listed as a face somewhere. Like, that doesn't mean anything. No, 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 no. It means nothing. She is, she is, she's a heel. She is totally a heel, which is fine. And that's pretty much all we have for the summer. What would we give this? I'm, what a I'm double gi- turn. I'm giving us a nine. I give it an eight and a half. There was a lot of good stuff on here. So good. So good. Great SummerSlam. Um, Triple H era is fully underway, especially on Raw, because... I'm a granny, granny got the mommy milkers. <laughs> <laughs> but on Raw, I don't know if you watched it, we have a new contender, number one contender for the United States Championship, and his name is Tommaso Ciampa. Dude, that U.S. title package. Oh. <laughs> it felt good. Narrated by JBL. Oh, it, just, it felt so right. It's, it's the JBL narration that did Booker it. Booker T on commentary. It just, it felt so right. <laughs> Bobby Lashley is massive, massive embodiment of a man as U.S. champion. <laughs> it just felt so right. What did you think of Bobby's entrance at SummerSlam? Like the, him just like... This towering figure in the shadows. <laughs> Dude, he's the best entrance in wrestling. It's so it's so larger than life. I mean, Roman's is damn good too. Mm-hmm. But Bobby's, it just it surprises me every single time. Mm-hmm. Every time I watch, I go, "Fuck, this guy looks like a." Million we didn't bucks. talk about his match when we talked about SummerSlam. Yeah, but... he squashed him. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. But the way he the way he went to that finish, where he were like. Theory rolled into the ring and tried to do a pop up, and Bobby caught him yeah. and military pressed him in the air. He's like, "Oh no, you don't! <laughs> come here, come here, come right here. Get, get, the, get over here. Yeah, now watch." <laughs> I was like, "Holy shit!" Like Bobby is just a scary, strong man. And then we had the two triple threat matches, which had Triple H prints all over because Mustafa Ali was back on Raw. I was like, "Okay, that's a Triple H move." Um. But the fact that Ciampa beat Styles pretty much clean in yeah. the middle of the ring, I was like, whoa. First of all, I want to see Ciampa versus Styles anyways, because that looks like a barn burner of a match. Yeah. And Ciampa got over on Styles, and the, which screams Triple H move. It does <laughs> scream Triple H move. You know, um, which is fine, because 
of everybody in the of all the people in the in the triple threat matches, Ciampa is the one who needed the most help. Dude, this is gonna make people watch Raw again. Yeah. People are gonna go. People are gonna go. Oh, Triple H is in charge. Well, okay. Let's Ciampa's let's going for the U.S. title. What? Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Ciampa beat AJ Styles. What? <laughs> you know, I'm I'm interested to see Ciampa versus. Bobby, I think Bobby will probably beat him still. Dude, I'm excited for WWE <laughs> be an actual hot product again. You know, and here's the crazy thing. Their hottest babyface is still injured. Cody, Cody. Rhodes, Cody's still on the shelf. Dude, what a great time for Cody to come back with Triple H booking. Cody's probably like, ah, oh, shit, I need to make a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's absolutely nuts um, how fresh the product looked, especially for Raw. I'm very excited for SmackDown to see very if they're going. Yeah, um, SmackDown sucked lately. I haven't watched SmackDown in a while. But they kept Roman off of Raw. They kept the the Usos were were not so much on SmackDown. No, they were there for oh, on SmackDown, yeah. I mean, on Raw. They won. No, they, they, they had the US title. They had the title match. They had the, the title, title match, match. Yeah, but like I don't. I think they'll. I think they will go back to SmackDown at the end of the week. Yes. Um. So, so that that's the that's the big thing you have. There's like, what is going to happen on SmackDown? Because you're going to have Roman's first appearance post SummerSlam, um, and everything that comes with that. But Ciampa's the you in one week. Ciampa became Ciampa went from laggy for Miz to number one contender for U.S. title. Yeah, it'll it'll be that. <laughs> you know, um, with his Nickelodeon gear. Yeah, bizarre, right? <laughs> really but, weird. But hey, yo, in in. It it matched it matched with the rest of the Miz and Maurice's outfits and like, God, I love me some Maurice. Absolutely. Maurice. Oh, I'm a huge Maurice fan. Um, but I'm I'm so excited for it. By the way, did you see the first triple threat when AJ? Yeah, I did. Po- that. How many great, different ways can AJ finish. get into a Styles Clash? Too many, dude. <laughs> he literally took Moose Ali's four fifty and I was like, nope, keep rolling. Here's a Styles Clash. Game over. This man's out of control. Absolutely out of control. All right, so we're getting towards the end of our of our main show here, folks. Post show coming up afterwards for everybody watching the live stream, um, and it's going to be our future shock. We're trying to predict the future of wrestling in some way, shape, or form, and it obviously revolves around a tweet from Triple H. So Triple H tweeted uh, or retweeted uh, when he when WWE had tweeted like Bailey's back, and it looks like Bailey has more backup. And Triple H retweeted. And we're just getting started. Dot dot dot. So with that being said, what is your wildest prediction about what Triple H might book or who Triple H might bring back within the next foreseeable future? What is this tweet? I can't read it. So WWE had tweeted that Bailey returned and looks like she didn't come alone. She came with some backup, and Triple H retweeted it and said, "Oh, we're just getting started. We're so just who's getting com- started." Who's coming in? Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to see a last name change of Gonzalez real quick. <laughs> um, I think I think he's trying to make a push for Sasha Sasha and Naomi. I heard that as well. I didn't want like I still don't want to talk about it, but there's a rumor going around. Um, and like I said, I'll believe it when I see it. But they that Sasha and Naomi came to some sort of reconciliation, some agreement to return. Rumor, huge rumor. I uh, don't really want to comment because, like I said, I'll believe it when I see it. I think it's I think it's totally possible. I think they're definitely talking, at least. I think they're talking, yes. Um, but I don't know, I don't know if they will if they come back or when they even come back. Um, I hope they come back. I do too because if you're gonna bring if you're gonna put Bailey and EO and Dakota Kai on um, on Raw, you need to balance out SmackDown somehow. Yeah. And they're telling yeah. me for SmackDown. And R- Ronda Rousey can't work with Natalia the whole the whole time. No, Lacey no. Evans is nowhere near ready. No. Um, um, who who's available? Anybody that's in Triple H's phone book is available at this point. Uh, like my friend Charles said, I was talking to Charles about this. Uh, shout out to Charles, great guy. And I think you could see Casey and my boo. Casey and Caden. Yeah. Um, you know she's not Casey anymore. Yeah, she's a Katana Chance. Yeah. Um, well, they're, they're going to be down there for a while. They just won the NXT tag titles. Yeah. Finally. Well, <laughs> I hear Blue Pants is available. <laughs> I, I do love me some Blue Pants. Leva Bates. 
Um, but the way Charles explained it, he was just like, as soon as the word was confirmed that Vince was leaving, Vin, uh, Triple H probably called a bunch of people and was like, stand by. We're going to get you back. Stand back and stand by. Because <laughs> <laughs> honestly, that's the only other reason Dakota Kai got back in. Yeah, I was very surprised to see Dakota Kai. Yeah. Try to see Dakota. I wouldn't be surprised if Triple H makes a play for, um, uh, fuck is her name? I know her as Nixon Newell. Um, Dakota Kai's friend. Oh my god, why am I, why am I? Team Kick? Not T, well. Tegan Knox? Tegan, there we go, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a play for Tegan. If she's not injured again. If she's not injured, I wouldn't be surprised. How are your knees, bruh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you probably see Shotzi get a push. I think Shots is going to get a push as I mean, well. Lacey could get a push. I mean, they have they have people there. They just need to build them. Like, do you just bring someone in, or do you build the talent you currently have? I think you do a little bit of both. I mean, if you bring someone in, you got to bury somebody. They got to go. They, someone's got to put them over. I think you bring in. I think you bring in people you know you can trust to work, and then to help. Do you, do you bring um, Mandy back? No, Mandy stays. Sonia, she's no longer to be seen. Sonia, you need to build up. Sonia's an asset that they don't utilize enough. She's not on TV. She has been on SmackDown. Doing what? She's, been, she's back. She's no longer an authority figure. She's back to just a wrestler. And she's been fucking with Adam Pearce. So Adam Pearce has been screwing her over and putting her in matches where she's losing. Um, Jenny's not coming over. Kaylee Ray is not. Do we forget about maximum to... male models in SummerSlam, by the way? Brilliant. Dude, Brilliant. I, I, laughed. <laughs> I laughed out loud on my couch by myself for so long. It was, it was, they were wet. <laughs> it, it was hilarious. And I love that they're, 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 it's a group of four now. You have Maxine and you have yes. Max. <laughs> yes. I was just like, at first I was like, this chick is so much better than what's his name. And then he came in, I just went, oh, that's so much better. <laughs> that's, that's, that's perfect. It's you, fucking perfect. You need to follow their Twitter handle. It's great. They take everybody's submissions and they just kind of fuck with them. Oh my God. So they roast people on Twitter. I love it. Like it's it's so funny, dude. It's so bad. Like it's, it's it reminds so funny. It reminds me of Zoolander. Like it's so bad, it's good. <laughs> I hate Zoolander, but this is amazing. <laughs> Zoolander annoys me. This is just perfect. <laughs> I love it. It's I so homoerotic. It so <laughs> it's like it's 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 not gay enough to be called gay, but it's, it's still a little gay. <laughs> It's it is probably one of those things that Vince probably saw and just made him laugh. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah dude. Like, this is stupid. Let's like, do we it. Do, we, we can do this. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> so good. You know what makes it? It's the fact that everybody is just going a hundred percent with it. I'm not, that that is that is really what it is. That's a thousand That's what. That's how you make something. That's how you make something shitty work. Yeah. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, I can see a lot of casual people watching this and just going, "What is this bullshit?" What is this bullshit? <laughs> and I can see why, like wrestling fans would go, "Okay, this is embarrassing. Like it's embarrassing. I wouldn't sh if I'm trying to show someone wrestling. This is the last thing I'm showing them." I, I agree. <laughs> like I only show this to re like, have you, bro? Have you seen this? Like I only show this to wrestling fans. Like you yeah. cannot show this to actual people. <laughs> you can't. You can't. Like if I showed it to my dad, he'd be like, he'd be concerned for you. He'd be like, what? What are you like? What are you actually watching? <laughs> if I showed it to my brother, he'd just go, I don't get it. If I showed it to my friends, forget it. <laughs> I'm never hearing the end of it. <laughs> oh my god, there's, there's, so, and they're in the perfect spot. They don't have to be in a match. They can just be a segment for a while. And I wouldn't be surprised if he reverts to LA Knight at some point. Dude, they don't even need to wrestle. They don't. They don't need to wrestle. But they remain relevant because they're on TV. It's like the RNN, you know, check Dude, they could, they could do ad spots forever. <laughs> Honestly. Because that's what it was, dude. It was, it was a, a pure it was ad a, spot. For water. For it water. was an ad spot for water. water. <laughs> and it was one of the best parts of the show. <laughs> now, here's my question for you, Will. 
let's say you go to Access and Maxwell Mel Maz is still a thing. And yes. They have, they have a photo. They have a the photo booth. Yes. Okay, perfect. It's one of them. I don't care what the rest of that sentence is. The answer is yes. <laughs> It's like a max a maximum male model photo booth or a photo shoot with them. Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Oh my god. I would just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> with sunglasses going down. <laughs> so good. It's... And I would wear dude, I'd probably wear my bathrobe. <laughs> <laughs> My oh red my god! I I love Maxim Mel models. Um, I think there's a strong possibility. We'll go back to the speech. I for Triple H. I think there's a strong possibility that Johnny can return. Yes, I agree. Um, I think we could possibly see. Uh, Kyrie Sane might make a jump back now. Uh, you know. maybe. Or, I mean, I don't know if <clears throat> any restrictions, COVID or anything like that. Yeah. But it's, it's possible. She'd be a great, she's, she'd be a great get, for sure. I think there's a lot of people who... I bet Ember Moon's kicking herself in the teeth right now. I bet you so is Adam Cole. <laughs> yeah, she's, so... in a, she's in AEW, remember? Yeah, no, I bet I think, I think so is Adam Cole. Oh, I don't think Adam Cole's kicking himself. No, dude, he's still on vacation. He's, still uh, he's still doing fine, that's right. Dude, he's so. fucking his girlfriend, like, way more. <laughs> he's not regretting anything. <laughs> Yeah, I think Ember Moon's kicking herself in the face. Um, I mean, I know Swerve and Keefley are tag champions, but, like, I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a play for Hit Row. They're on the contract. They can't go. They can't go anywhere. Uh, Swerve is, right? Swerve's on the contract, yeah. Yeah, the other three members are not. <laughs> Dude, all these, all these guys, like, everyone's like, who's going to jump from AEW? Bro, they're under, like, three to five-year deals. Like, they're not going anywhere. The only person I can potentially see jump that if, he, if I can make it happen be Triple H, it's probably MJF because he hasn't been on TV. There's something really wrong with the MJF storyline right now. Yeah, something's really... <laughs> something's it, really he, wrong. He shouldn't be off TV this long. Yeah, there's something yeah, really wrong. Work. Yeah, I don't think it is. I think there's something really, really wrong backstage, and I wouldn't be surprised if he shows up on WWE TV because Triple H and company negotiated his release. Dude... I, I don't know. I mean, if this is, isn't a work, the kid's got a real attitude problem. Hmm. It could be and that work. shit's not going to fly in WWE. I think if Vince, I think Vince would have straightened him out. I think, I think MJF will still have an ego with Triple H. Hmm. It's possible, but I think it's also the fact that I don't think he actually wants to be in AEW anymore. Like, you know those people who have an attitude because they, they, they fuck shit up because they don't want to be there. But when they go to a new place, they're, like, clean as a whistle. Like an Antonio yeah. Brown, <laughs> for instance. Remember when Antonio Brown's with the Raiders and he sabotaged everything? Oh, I don't like the helmet. Oh, my yeah. foot's fucked up, blah, blah, blah. Gets a Tom Brady in the bucket. He's, oh, my God, I'm free. I'm going to be the happiest person in the world. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> bro, that's, that's the power of Tom Brady. <laughs> right? That's what I mean. The power of Vince McMahon would mm-hmm. straighten out MJF. Can the power of Triple H... Like, do you think, like, oh, my God, Dak Prescott, ooh. <laughs> yeah, like, even, like, even, like, a, um, like, oh, a Ben Roethlisberger, ooh. <laughs> well, he already did it, sorry, he, he did it with Big Ben. See, like, he already did it with Big Ben. Yeah. So, oh, I, Russell Wilson, ooh. So, I don't, I, I mean, it's yet to be seen, but, like, MJF's too big of a town to be off of TV since, for, like, what, two months now? You would take, yeah. Yeah, it's no bueno. Yeah, it's just, there's some like like I said, there's something really wrong <laughs> in, back there. I mean, if I'm Tony Khan, dude, here's the thing. Here's the thing for MJF needs to realize: the longer he's off TV, the more his stock drops. The worse it becomes for him. Yes. Yes, like you, if you, if like, dude, if this isn't a work, like this is on you now. Like the ball is in your court on MJF. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, like if this, if you're really acting up like this, that says a lot about you as the actual person, not just the character you play on TV. And that's not going to do you any favors in this business for anybody. No. Got to kind of grow up. They have to come to work. To some he sort of contract. Some sort of reconciliation. And I wonder if he's in violation of his contract. He probably is. 
I don't know. I don't know. You'd have to see what the contract is because, like, that's the only reason I think he would ever come back. Because, like, if he's guaranteed money, no matter what the fuck he does, yeah, I'm sending the fuck home. Yeah. You know? No one's bigger than the company. <laughs> you know, it's it's got to... It, there's something in the nature of that contract that he is probably fine right now. Because the second he the second he probably has to show up on somewhere means he ran out of money or the money's not coming in anymore. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's very true. A, uh, AEW just needs to wait him out. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. He's going to run out of money. Is that, yeah, he's going to run out of money. Yeah. Well, then again, so is AEW. It's a game of who's going who's gonna to become broke first. So... So it, it is what it is, but I'm I'm excited for WWE to, to start this shift. Again, it's only one show for right now, but the future looks promising going into class. And what's good about this is now you have four or five weeks of no premium live events. Take your sweet ass time, baby. Five mm-hmm. weeks is an eternity in wrestling. You know they they have till September third is when they go over to Cardiff. For by for the uh, for Principality Stadium, which by the way, that stadium is fucking massive. Will, it's fucking huge. It's a soccer slash rugby stadium. Yeah, it's humongous. Yeah, it, it's like holds like seventy two thousand. Oh Jesus! They probably sit on actual bleachers. <laughs> yeah, um, dude, that crowd. Oh my God, dude, an, an an oh my God, a Great Britain stadium crowd. Yeah, it's it's got a room. Dude, it's, it's so got... much singing. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude, I'm so excited. I am very excited as well. So if I was rich, I would go. <clears throat> yeah, because then we can see Jermaine. You know, Jermaine's Fuck gonna yeah. go. Fuck yeah, I'd see Jermaine. <laughs> I don't even so, know what Jermaine looks like, but I'll go see him. I he, he has pictures of we have pictures of Jermaine somewhere. He has a video sent to us when we did 200, I think. Um. But yeah, no, I'm excited for this. They've got a lot of time to reinvent. There's going to be a lot of more surprises coming together. I'm very excited for this, for the for the H era. <laughs> what do you call the the Triple H era? Papa Trips, Uncle Trips, whatever. Papa Trips, dude. Papa Trips, baby. I, because like if you look at the raw product, it just looks like they're a lot more comfortable in their own skin. It's tight. A lot of the performers. Very tight. Yeah tight show. At least Hulu Raw is very, very tight. <clears throat> so, like I said, we'll see what happens on SmackDown. Uh, I have yet to watch this week's NXT. Um, cause, and I feel, I feel NXT is going to feel the ripple effects as well. I think NXT is going to be forgotten. Triple H can't do both. Unfortunately, he can't, no. Um, but we'll see how much of that H influence goes down, trickles down to NXT. I feel like they'll get some of it. I feel like Triple H be like, who wants it? Just well, someone he's Triple H makes and if I was Triple H I'd be like who someone step up who wants it plead your case. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got HBK running the show, and HBK I think knows HBK and Triple H go hand in hand. It's possible, like I said, I don't know, but there there's there's going to be a lot of different things going, and so I think it's going to be good. Uh, but with that being said, I think that's the end of the show. Yeah, we're at the end. Going to the post show after this, where we'll talk about a lot of other crazy stuff. Like, oh my God, Will, did you see Kurt Angle's A and E documentary? No. Oh, it's so good. I don't, I don't care about those. Yes, it's called Vicodin. Vicodin. I bet. Oh was no! It, was it was it brought to you by Pfizer? I hope it was. I really hope it was brought. It to was you not by brought Pfizer. to you by Pfizer. No, no, it was not. But it, I, he he actually goes through the process of how he would get his pills. Oh God! It's pre- yeah, Perk Angle. That's right, top tier the quan Perk Angle. Perk Angle. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, no, it's it's crazy stuff. I'll talk about it on the post show. But anything else to add? No, man. I think we Gucci. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, let me just sit forward. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Put get yourself together, sir. There we go. (laughs) 
Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 302, Beastmaster. I've been your host, King Ricky Rose. Find me at Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets. Kings of the Rings podcast at KOTR underscore podcast on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube, on Discord, on Twitch. Like, share, subscribe. Leave us five-star reviews wherever you listen to us and wherever you listen to all of your podcasts by subscribing to WrestleLive Radio, the cure for the common res- for the common wrestling podcast. Sorry about that. I screwed up my own tagline. Featuring the likes of, of course, Kings of the Rings podcast, the Young Lions Retractor with Mr. Zachary Rose Zika, the Game Changer podcast with Birthday Boy Nate. Happy birthday, Nate. Um, as well as the Fretzel Mania podcast as well. Coming out on Fridays, also known as Fretz Fridays. You can follow Wrestle Addict Radio at Addict underscore Wrestle on Twitter and Wrestle Addict Radio everywhere else. Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, Discord, all of that fun stuff. Like, share, subscribe. The links to all of our stuff, including some of our great merchandise, like the shirt that I'm wearing right here. This Kings of the Rings podcast merchandise are in the description below if you are watching us or you are listening to us. SummerSlam was great. The new era of WWE is great. And AEW has another fucking title, which is, I guess, great as well. Well, Tarashak, what about you, sir? Yeah, what else is new? Fucking AEW. I still like AEW, but it's getting harder to watch. But I'm Will Tarras. You can watch all my shit. <clears throat> Anywhere across the internet, either Talk or Tarashik Podcast or Ambiguous Podcast Solutions. Anywhere podcasts can be found. Uh, I had Mr. Wild P on, actually, at least last week. I forgot to plug that. Uh, yeah, Zach, was, Zach was a lot of fun, man. We talked about my feet. Uh, How many talked, pennies in a bathtub? We talked about pennies in bathtubs. How many pennies can you fit in a bathtub? We had, we had a lot of shits and giggles. Zach listed his top, he ranked his top sexiest accents in the U.S., <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, my buddy Christian explained why he's going to Indiana last. If you had, a, if you like, if you had a year to visit all fifty states, which state would you visit last? He chose Indiana. I can agree. I can see that. Yeah. So. Sundown towns. It was, it's sundown towns, really. That's the thing for me. It was a lot of fun. So go check that out. All the clips on Instagram, TikTok, and the full podcast is anywhere and everywhere. Yeah, I'm waiting for my debut on the, on the talk with Tarek Show, but we'll get to that. It's at coming. Some point. It's after Christian gets back from Spain. <laughs> very, true. very true yeah so yeah that'll be around but until then folks we'll be back next week hopefully with a full cast of characters k murphy we hope you are feeling better um in whatever in whatever you're dealing with in your sabbatical and we hope that you'll be back soon so when we come back we'll talk about the week two of a triple h era as well as if AEW adds another title we're hoping that they get to about 20 at this point <laughs> um and anything else going on in the world of wrestling like rick flair's last match last match which is probably going to happen. This is probably going to happen. So fucking stupid. <laughs> Rick Flair, dude. <laughs> Which is probably going to happen next week. So until then, folks, goodbye. Good night. Stick around for the post show if you're watching live. And, uh, oh, yeah. Fuck you, Slack. Fuck you, Slack. See you later, folks. And your little dog, too. <laughs> you